Hey there folks, Peter here with BlackRock Business and we are moving along in our troubleshooting steps for figuring out why your QuickBooks point of sale client will not connect to the server. This would be in a multi-register or multi-station environment in your business where you have more than one station you want on QuickBooks point of sale. The server is working fine, the main register but you have a secondary register or back computer and it is not connecting correctly to the main one it just comes up blank so uh, you've probably been through a number of the steps and on this step we are just going to check some general kind of network testing type stuff to make sure that these two computers are communicating correctly that they can see each other correctly so before we do that, I'm going to have you click on the link down below and get over to our QuickBooks Point of Sale Facebook group where you can ask questions like this, request videos for this channel, talk to other community members about point of sale workflows. Uh, people such as myself and other point of sale users will have a great dialogue and we'll figure out all your problems. If you're on YouTube, don't forget to hit subscribe down below so that you can get all the latest, greatest QuickBooks Point of Sale videos. All right, so... In this demonstration video, I have two computers because essentially we need two computers to test connectivity, right? So I have this one that I'm sitting in front of right now. It's my office computer. And then I have a second computer, which is kind of a client or just another computer uh, in general. And that is my laptop. And I have that on a remote screen here so that we can go through some of the tests and figure out whether they're communicating correctly. In order to do the next step, you're gonna to wanna to take a piece of paper and write down some specifics for the two different computers so that you can do some of this testing. All right, so uh, on both computers, you are going to first go on the start menu and I want you to type in CMD and you'll see command prompt Choose command prompt and that'll bring up this black screen where you, we have an old MS-DOS terminal type prompt and we're going to do a few things there. The first thing I want you to do is type in ipconfig and hit enter. This is going to show you some information about how your computer is connected to your network. Uh, most likely you have an IPv4 address. You might also have an IPv6 address. Uh, but the pieces that we're going to write down is going to be your IPv4 address. And just for good measure, why don't you write down your default gateway? So the IPv4 address is your IP address on your local network for this computer. And the default gateway is actually the address of most likely your router or your modem. Most likely your router, though. And that often ends in 1.1. .1. Now... Uh, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you that if this does not start with 192.168 or possibly start with 10. something, 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 then you may actually have a regular internet IP address, in which case uh, you're getting an IP that is for the internet and not for your local network. Uh, QuickBooks point of sale runs on the local area network where it's kind of caged in and can communicate with the workstations in a sheltered environment, sheltered from the greater internet, I guess I would say. So make sure that these start with 192.168 or 10. something something something. There's a few other exceptions, but I'm just going to cover those two because those are the most prevalent, widely used local area network addresses. Now, uh, in the same regard, I'm going to bring over my little remote machine here. Let me just do kind of the same thing here. CMD, IP config. I'm going to stretch this out a little bit so we can read it a little better. All right, now we got 192.168.1202 and the same gateway because they're on the same network they have the same router they have the same gateway so we can see here uh, my office machine is 201 and my laptop is 202 that's pretty pretty nice right next to each other on the spectrum so we have that written down <clears throat> then also 
uh, you're going to want to obtain the computers, the two different computers' names. So um, in this case, the easiest way to do this is to hold down the Windows key and press the pause button on the keyboard. So Windows key is way down the lower left and pause button is probably in the upper right, kind of next to your number pad or your page up, page down keys. So hitting the Windows key and pause is going to bring up our system information with some information about our computer, about our work group, etc. Now, one thing you want to check is to make sure that both of your computers are on the same work group. It's kind of an antiquated idea, but I've still seen it produce problems if they're on different work groups. They're just not communicating kind of on the same wavelength. And I want you to write down the computer name for each of the machines. And I want you to make sure to pay attention to the caps whether it's uppercase or lowercase, any dashes or spaces. There shouldn't be spaces, but maybe underscores. And so go ahead and write it down for both. And it looks like my remote session is not taking my keys. So I'm just going to get to the system information this way. System, let's see, system and security, system, same thing. I went to the control panel, I went to system and security, I went to system. So we have the one I'm sitting at is named office. The one that is remote here is called critter. So now I'm going to start testing some of the connectivity between the two. So back to the command prompt, the big black screen. The first thing I'm going to do is try and ping the other computer. And this is just like a submarine. You're trying to bounce some, some communication off of it and it should come back to you. So in my command prompt, I'm gonna type ping and then the IP address of the other computer. 192.168.1.202 was the address for the other computer. I'm gonna hit enter. Now I am receiving replies from that address it says reply from, reply from, reply from, reply from. That is good. So I sent four packets, I received four packets, I lost no packets, and the milliseconds and all this were very low, which means it's very fast, two milliseconds, three milliseconds. Uh, so very fast, very effective communication, that's excellent. If you see a different message here that's not like reply, if it says timeout or if it sits there and waits forever and you don't get replies, then there is something wrong with your network. There may even be something wrong with your um, modem or router. Another thing that I should mention going back up to these addresses here is if your default gateway or your IP addresses are very different, like if you don't have the same gateway, then your two computers may actually be on two different segments of your network. And so that would probably make it so you can't ping each other as well. Uh, but otherwise, if let's say one of these was 192168 and the other one started with 10, then you're probably not on the same network segment. You're not in the same neighborhood, in other words. All right, going back down here. So let's say you got good replies from that other computer. Uh, all of this stuff that we're doing here, you're gonna wanna do it in one direction from one computer, and you're wanna, gonna wanna do the exact same thing in the other direction to the other computer. So now, now that I know that there's communication across IP address, we're gonna take it to the next level and I'm gonna try and ping the computer name. Now what happens here is that when this request gets to the router, the router says, hmm, do I know who Critter is? Oh yeah, I have Critter's address right here. So what it does is the router takes the name Critter and it actually um, translates it over to that IP address that we previously know was good. And so here what we're testing actually is the uh, ability for your network and your router to translate between computer names and IP addresses. And QuickBooks Point of Sale itself actually relies on the computer names. If you've ever seen that screen come up where it asks you to choose a company name for your point of sale, 
you'll notice that it says this is the company name and it says on this computer so it would say like uh, BlackRock company on office office being the name of the computer or critter being the name of the computer so point of sale does rely on this translation between computer names and IP address so we're gonna try it now we're gonna ping critter the computer name and you can see right away it doesn't say reply from critter it says reply from 202 so here we go 202 202 so it is in fact translating on my network between computer name and IP address now if you've had a problem with any of these tests that we've done then you either have a problem with the way that that particular computer is translating names or with the way that the router is doing it so uh, you may want to restart your router again and like I said you're gonna to want to do this from one computer to the other and vice versa if it's only a problem with one of them being able to complete all these tests then the problem is probably with that computer now we're gonna get all crazy here and we're gonna pretend that you were able to ping by IP but you were not able to ping by computer name there is a remedy to this and the way that you can um, there's a way that you can fix it up so if it's on one particular computer and you cannot ping by computer name to the other computers name then hold on to your hats here because this is gonna get uh, a little scary but it's gonna be okay we're gonna go to a folder Explorer we are going to go into the C Drive we're going to Windows we are going to system 32 I think it is let's see here system 32 and drivers I'm gonna repeat all these at the end and in drivers we're going to etc all right so here is that path again C Windows system 32 drivers etc and this file right here is called the hosts file the hosts file is a file where you can hard code that relationship between computer name and IP address so if your computer is having a problem figuring out that the name critter is for that IP address then you can actually hard code it right here I'm gonna move this over so I can see some of these IPs and things you can right click on hosts and you can go to open with and it should allow us to choose what we're gonna open it with I'm gonna choose notepad and hit OK now most of you will not have much in here uh, I have some development stuff here that I'm just gonna move way down so most of yours will probably look like this and anything with the pound symbol the pound symbol means that uh, your computer is going to ignore that line but what you're going to want to put in here is let me get it lined up so I want it to know that 192.168.1.202 is the same as the host name or the computer name critter <clears throat> so by simply putting that in here hitting tab and then typing the computer name I'm telling my computer that if I ever refer to critter then I really mean this and this is a way to hard code what IP address is what computer so that your computer knows without even asking the router so I'm sorry that's that might be making your mind explode right now but you're gonna do this and you're gonna save and it's gonna come up and ask me where I want to save it now here's <laughs> here's here's a problem uh, this is a system folder and so sometimes it has an issue with you saving in it I'm gonna try it and we'll see how Windows 10 um, yeah see Windows 10 says I don't have permission to save in this location so really what you want to do is save this to your desktop and then copy it into that folder and overwrite 
the previous host file. So if you have any problem with that, you can give me a call and we can set up something where I can help you. But you want to save this file. Ooh, it's a really big window over this host file here. So you might need to save it to your desktop. Make sure and take take the .txt extension off of it first and then overwrite this host file. And then from there on out, it will know automatically that that IP address is for that computer. One other complication in doing this is that the IP addresses on your local network uh, are handed out kind of randomly and then your computer will keep them for a period of time. Sometimes your computer will keep the same IP address for a long, long time and your router will just keep giving it the same one. It's called a IP lease. Uh, but sometimes, once in a long while, I don't know, maybe you restarted your router, maybe you had a power outage, something like that, uh, and maybe the router kind of gets reset a little bit and it starts handing out different IP addresses to all the devices on the network, and suddenly all the computers on the network have a new different IP address, which invalidates the setting you just set in the host file and makes it not work anymore. You need to re-edit the host file and put the new IP for that computer in there. Sorry, might have to happen. All right, this was a long and arduous tutorial, but I'm glad you came along. I hope this maybe helped you investigate what's going on on your network and see what's working or not working. My name is Peter with BlackRock Business. I hope you have an excellent day. Leave any questions below or jump on over to our Facebook group. I'll be hanging out there. Thank you very much. You have a great day. Bye-bye.